Okay. Mic check. So this will be a Jordy Does video. Um, I'm going to carve a couple mushrooms today, and I'm going to just basically carve it real time. You guys can watch along, or if you don't, if you, mushrooms are too simple for you, well then, don't watch. But I think mushrooms are really good for the very beginner, beginning chainsaw carvers, because you learn how to turn in the wood. And, uh, well, yeah. It's, they're just really good and basic to do for the very beginners. And I'm a beginner uh, chainsaw carver too. So uh, I'm going to carve a mush couple mushrooms out of this little piece of cedar, <clears throat> western red cedar. I don't really have anything bigger than this to cut up for mushrooms right now, which is kind of a shame. But I got this PV tool. It's a shame I don't have a bigger log because this PV... Like normally a PV, you just get it and it doesn't have this, but this helps it ele elevate off the ground. So it's a shame I didn't have a bigger log because why I got this is because sometimes when I lay the logs down like this, you got to cut the, so the bottom square, so it stands up nice and straight. And whenever I got to reach down to the very ground, I'm talking big logs too, right? Like not this, reach to the ground, try and lift it up. I can't lift it up, but I think if I could elevate it first I'll just show you a quick example so you get the hook in there then you just pretend this is a bigger log you can elevate it like this you know you can get well there now if I follow the pitch of the wood like the angle I can do my straight cut now and it's so much easier to lift the big log up because it's already elevated off the ground if that makes sense to you i don't know how well this log's gonna work because it's got some kind of punky in some spots right here so i'm gonna well i might as well fire up the saw cuts maybe i'll get two small mushrooms out of this and i'm gonna show you how to drill a hole in the bottom bang some rebar in the ground and then you can put some glue in the mushroom if you don't want people to steal them put some glue inside the hole and then set it on top of the rebar so i don't even know if there's gas in this saw or not Okay, good. So there's no rot. Uh, the rot's just in the very bottom of this piece. I'll show you guys where the wood's punky. This is what I was talking about. Is that on camera? So, right there. Anyways, um, let me get this. So that works pretty good. That, uh, log hoisting you get it on amazon i think it's like 60 60 70 american dollars so we're going to cut this log in half and we'll make two uh mushrooms mushrooms can be uh any shapes or sizes that you want they're totally fantasy so you can i just don't like my mushrooms to look like well um let's just say it rhymes with with rock so you don't want to carve uh, rhymes with rock mushrooms. Anyways, I'll get this cut up in half, and then we'll go into the tent. This is a uh, nice old cedar. Anyways, you can see it's kind of bullshit here. So, but it's perfect for little mushrooms. Carry on. Okay, so. If you look at mushrooms, the mushroom caps are always bigger than the stalk. So this piece here, it's still a little bit punky up top, but it doesn't matter, not whole. This piece here is bigger at the top, so I'm going to use this for the bottom. So what I'm going to do first before I do any type of carving is I'm going to put this in my jaw horse, tighten it up so it's stable. And uh, I got an auger bit. 
I'm gonna, where is it? It's right here. I'll put this in my drill. It's brand new. I just picked this up on uh, Amazon. It's what, I don't know, an inch thick. And I'm gonna drill the hole in the bottom just to get it done. Get out of there. See? And I'm just gonna go a bit off the punky stuff. I'm just gonna go right here, drill about six inches deep in there. Okay, so let me get the, where's the drill? Might as well just keep doing this. I don't know if this uh, drill chuck's big enough for, if this will fit in the chuck. Perfect, it fits. Okay, so just find your spot. Oh. Perfect. So I'll get this done for the both the mushrooms. How much depth we got in there? So that's already done. Get your rebar. I got a piece of rebar here. I think this is the, I don't know what size it is, but there you go. Then you just mark it. And then you bang this part into the ground. You mark it where it goes into the mushroom with a pan here. Right? So you get your pan and mark it here. Then you bang this into the ground and you bang it just to the mark. And then you can put some glue on this and you can put some glue in here. And then it's hard for people to steal. You know, you'd probably have to use a longer piece of rebar into the ground for harder for people to get out. But if you guys can understand my point. And it's also good, you know, you could even have this much into the ground too. Because sometimes if you curve the thinner mushrooms, they don't stand up very well. It's a good way to make them stand up good too. So... Let me make sure this is filming. Yeah, it's filming. Um, I always start with the bottom of the mushrooms first with the stalk. It's easier. I don't really want to explain why it's easier, but it's easier. Because, well, I'll explain why it's easier. Because if you do this, the, the mushroom cap first, you can't pretend we got it like this. This is the top and we carve this first and everything's rounder. It's hard to clamp in your jaw horse when everything's rounder up here. It will fall out easy. So it's just easier to do the bottom first. And everything in this video is my opinion. Mushrooms are good for very beginners. Uh, pumpkins are good for very beginners. Trees are good for very beginners. Anything just uh, round and simple. The more that you use your saw, the better you're going to get. Okay, so our mushroom cap's down here. So where, where do we want our mushroom cap to be? Right about here. I'm not really trying to carve any certain type of mushroom. So now what I got to do is the bottom's here. I got to cut in this way. First of all, I got to cut around here. Right? Straight in. Then I got to cut it in an angle because you want your stock to be like this. Not, you can make it straight. You can turn it. You can do whatever you want. But I just want mine to be simple. I'm not going to get too carried away here. So let me get the chainsaw. Oh, I want to talk about chainsaws too. I've been getting asked too. What's a good, <coughs> excuse me, what's a good chainsaw for the very beginners? This is your battery saw. This is the Steel MS, MSA 140. I suggest this saw for the very beginner. What's going on here? I suggest this saw for the very beginner if you want to do some chainsaw carving in your backyard. It's not that loud. The Steel MSA 140. It's light. And uh, it's good. I can see the chains come out of the... Uh, thing here so I'll have to fix that and where's the saw that I started using with standby I'm just gonna go out here and grab it for a gas saw 
I suggest the Steel MS-170. This is, this is your gas saw. This is basically Steel's cheapest saw. When it comes to carving, when it comes to carving, it almost seems like this is my most reliable saw besides the battery saws. Like I have least problems with this. And they're only a couple hundred bucks. You can get them on sale a couple times a year for a couple hundred bucks. And Canada, they're on sale for $200 right now. But if you get yourself a still MS-170 and still makes carving bars. So this is the steel carving bar on the battery saw. All you need to do is go to your steel shop, buy the 170, order a steel carving bar. They're 12 inches, dime tip. Order yourself the steel bar. You might have a bit of a wait till it comes in. I think they're on back order. And you have to order the sprocket to fit this bar in this chain. So this chain is 50 gauge quarter pitch. You need to order the sprocket for the one MS-170, but you do not need to order the sprocket for the battery soft MSA-140. It already comes with the quarter pitch sprocket, okay? So I'm going to say once again, for this battery saw, buy the MSA-140. Here's your battery here. Order the bar and order some chain. 50 gauge quarter pitch. You do not need to change the sprocket in the battery saw. For the gas saw, buy the saw, order that bar, 50 gauge quarter pitch, and order yourself a new sprocket to fit this chain and the bar that you're going to get. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to fuel up the saw. Maybe, should I sharpen it? I ah, probably should. No, I'm not going to sharpen. This thing's full of sand and stuff. So fire up the saw and just do some real, uh, fuel up the saw and just do some real time cutting. But first of all, I need to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Okay. So I got the saw fueled up. Did I fuel up the saw? Yeah, I think I did. So I was fueled up. So I might speed this up a bit. So this would be a uh, wedge cut. So it's always the slowest cut. You're doing like um, a thingy thing. A wedge. Fucking piece of shit. Okay, so I got the saw fired up here. So this will be a wedge cut. This is always, for me, it's always the slowest cut because you're going against the grain. You're kind of going with the grain. It's a wedge cut. So... What I'm, my goal is to try and make it like that. It doesn't matter if it's straight. The more time that you, the more that you do, the better you will get. So uh, it's going to be narrow inside here. Yeah. mention is protection gear uh, earplugs or earbuds uh, your eye protection and chaps I don't wear gloves because I like to get a better grip on that tool it gives me a better grip lets me feel what's happening better so Oh, my God. 
Okay, so here you can see I got it kind of tapered in. I didn't really concentrate too much, but you got square edges from your cuts. Now is when you can use the top of the bar to smooth it out. When I'm at my carving tent with the chainsaws, um, I'd much rather be using my chainsaws than die grinders or your grinders. It's just a lot faster and less dusty. So I'm going to use the top of the bar. You're going to see, I don't know if you guys can see, there's like square edges here. I'm going to do that with the bar. It will save me, save me time. Uh, sorry, I'm going to do that with the top of the chain. It will save me time. Is this thing filming? It will save me time for, with my grinder trying to round the edges. Just quickly. There, good enough for me. So when it's still in this position, I'm going to get my uh, my uh, angle grinder out and just kind of smooth it out. You can also get your uh, bar. I don't really do it for my mushrooms, but you can make little, uh, you know, with a, underneath the mushroom slits there, little things. <laughs> But I really don't do it I because people never, once they're in the ground, people don't really go out there and look and say, hey, there's no little mushroom slits in there. So let me get my uh, grinder out of here. And I'm just going to keep this counter rolling. Oh, uh, where is it? That oh, it seems pretty good. So this is your typical grinder with a sanding wheel on here. I think it's like 80 grit. I'm just going to run around it. Okay, make sure you have a good dust mask too when you're doing the sanding. The fucking... Okay, you guys can see that edge there. I just did some. I used the edge of that, the sandpaper, just to do some little texture marks in the stalk of the mushroom. So now at the bottom's done. You can burn it. You can do whatever you want to do. So now we got the top. Now we flip it over. The bottom's done. The hole's drilled. The thing's done. And that's done. Clamp it down on your jaw horse. If you don't have a jaw horse, you can use a piece of wood, screw it into the piece of wood. Yeah, that's pretty punky up there. So what I do is I just kind of, uh-oh, this, oh, I just kind of, where do I want my top? So I'm a, okay, let's draw it on. Let's show you. So here's my mushroom. And so here's the punky wood right here. So I'll just go like this. And here will be my top right here. Okay, this round part. So I just taper it out. Right, so this will, I'll round this off after, but I'm just going to get your saw and then you cut it this way. And you turn it in the wood if you want. This is where you can really practice turning the saw in the wood i'll start at the back i'll start right here and i'll show you guys just let the you push on the saw and with these carving bars they let you really turn in the wood good so i'll just kind of show you 
had a center point up here and did it all from the center and done this but i was worried about that rot so here it is off to the side sooner or later it will deteriorate and you'll have a hole in the mushroom so now you got the square edges like i talked about down here i'm just going to get my saw run around and clean them all up with the uh, top of the bar let's use this uh, battery saw Okay, so there you go. Sorry, I should have put my dust mask on. That's how uh, easy it is. You know now, freaking compressor. Just stand by. So there it is, you know, these uh, mushrooms are fun. And they're good for the very beginning. This doesn't have that much of this going on, but it doesn't look like uh, what rhymes with croc, um, rock. So, yeah, and you can, you know, for the very beginners, if you want to have more fun, you can carve little doors in here. You can carve windows. You can carve a window up here. You can uh, paint it. You can carve holes in here or make it so, like, there's, like, a strawberry shortcake things. You can use the tattoo ink. Get the. You can burn it. Do the shosu easy band. There's so much stuff you can do with these to have fun. So there's the first one. I think the second one that I'm going to do, I haven't done one of them yet, is a, a morel mushroom. It's like they're like, they're more basically mushrooms with a little bit of a stalk and they got like 
black holes in them, like kind of wormhole things. I'll have to look it up. So there's our first one. Okay. Simple project. But the number one thing about um, chainsaw carving is always safety first. So let's get, let me get the other log. And I'm going to start the process over again. With the, uh, drill the hole in the bottom. And just look, Google a couple pictures. I think they're Morel mushrooms. I don't, I might have carved one. I don't know. Drill the hole in the bottom. It's a little bit punky here. Punky means rotting. So I just go off from the punkiness. You gotta be careful when you're using these if you have a good drill that plugs in that has more, because this can snap and snap your wrist too. So always keep that in mind. That's why I rested on my belly here, so if it wants to catch, my belly will grab it. Good enough. Pull the hole out. Air she blows! And we'll flip it up. Do the same process over again. Sorry, I know I'm in the camera. This stock's going to be a little shorter and thicker so where's the pen i'm just going to pen this on then i'm going to take a break morel mushrooms i think they're the um, mushrooms people can eat but i think they're highly priced after so anyways there you go so i'm going to do the same process and i'll do a time lapse Three, two, one, carving time lapse coming up. Happy birthday, Spike. I mean, uh, Bap, happy birthday. Okay, you can see that's all done now. I did it the exact same way I did the other mushrooms. Now I got this uh, Mitabo die grinder. It's like the good, the good one with the silver, the good Makita with the silver handle. Um, I got a saber tooth bit in here. It's smaller because I got to cut little bird, cut little hole things in here, little marks. So um, cuts all doesn't sell the smaller quarter inch bits like this. So um, I'll plug that in and uh, put my dust mask on and carve the little things with it. Let's just try one. has a speed control yeah so this is not gonna look like a real mark it's just gonna be my Jesus it's just gonna be my version of it I'm just gonna run around do all these all the way around it and uh, I'll be back how's that Okay, so I got all these uh, carved in, little holes, I don't know, it's a pineapple mushroom, whatever you want to call it. Um, now because there's a little bit of fuzzies, I got my torch here, and I'm just going to go around it quickly, and uh, I didn't sand the bottom, it's going to get muddy on the spirit trails, don't care. And this just, this just gets rid of the fuzzies. Now I know there's uh, no paint that uh, might talk a little bit weird because my buddy Joe from Winnipeg standing behind here watching. Say hi, Joe. Hi. Um, I know I said no paint at the spirit trails, like I'm not allowed paint, but I think I have to paint this because I'm not going to burn inside there because you'll 
burn away all your sharp edges. So I don't know. It's getting painted. That's the bottom line, Joe. So I'm going to paint it and then go for lunch with my buddy Joe. And then I'll come back and then I'll sand it with my flap sand. I might as well sand the bottom too. Then I'll sand it with my uh, flap sander. This thing's not working very good. Okay, so I'll get this whole thing painted and um, let it dry when I go for lunch. If I don't sleep after. And then I'll be back. Say hi again, Joe. Hello. Big Joe Muffer off from Winnipeg. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, so I am back from lunch. Now I need to sand this paint off the high points with this flap sander. I'm tired. It's nap time. So I'll get that done. I'll get that done and I will be back. Okay, so that's all done. I did it with the grinder all the way around. You can also uh, get this orbit sander and then sand it with uh, this too. Okay, so that's it everybody. You know, you can get your torch, you can torch here, a little torch there, to do whatever you want to do. You can do any, yeah, so this, I think this is the first ever, uh, I don't know what I'm going to, it's a pineapple mushroom, but it's supposed to be one of those other thing things. I showed you guys how to do the holes in the bottom, get the rebar, bang it into the ground. These, these will be, because then when you do that, you can make the, uh, what is the stalks, you can make it much thinner. And then they'll, they'll self-stand. These ones are self-standing. But like I said, these are going in the spirit trail. So um, I'm going to glue them in, put some glue in the hole, some PL9000. Nobody will ever be able to steal them. And um, I don't know what else I can say. But uh, be safe. Have fun. Um, learn the chainsaw. Learn the tool. Safety is a big thing. And... Um, Guess that's going to be it for this one. Carbon fusion. Over and out. <laughs> See you later. Carve the mushrooms. Carve the mushrooms. <laughs>